meaning 72% of the votes go down the drain. It is real. It's not based on district It's based on the number of votes cast. Every, let's say, 20,000 votes is, is a seat. No votes are wasted. That's a much fairer system. It also leads to a weak government. Because there are many, many more parties. So if you talk so, this whole talk now about the existing voting is to limit democracy for the sake of a more stable government. I'm not, I'm not dealing with, with, with that. Neither system. We don't have the luxury of being able to afford either system. Is it that they need a strong government? A tough government which is free to do what has to be done. And it can't have that unless the people demand it. It's a strong government under this program and give them four years of free hands to get the courts, to get everything, let them put down the Intifada, let them next to territory, to the economic system, and the executive system. And then, after four years, we, we give you a state the way it should be. If Israel is not going to do that, and if we can't persuade the people to take their fate in their own hands, then I don't know what it's going to be. I, I have great fear to hear the vote. Yes. I understand the concept of the government of national emergency where you have one party ruling mm -hmm. until the emergency is solved. My problem is that you set the referendum before you choose the party. If, if you're going to have a government, uh, an elected government by the people, then the party that wins must set the policy. No, no, no. Now, in the referendum, it says, the only parties that may run are parties that accept the following platform. So the party, in order to run, must accept this platform. Otherwise, it is an illegal party. Which, essentially, based on the last election, only the big top, is it that right? I don't think so. I think that there are any number of, of, of groups in Israel which privately would love to say what cops say, but don't have the courage to do it. Especially when they, when they face this, fear, ra this uh, racist ban. So, so they don't say it. Certainly, Chia would like to say it, except for that crazy woman. But otherwise, they're, uh, I mean, they're all for it. They're all for it. And they're mine. I mean, all, all of them are for it. But they can't say it because racist and so on and so forth and deny such a leprosy. If a referendum would open the door to any party who wants to, to say it, you see how many parties would end up And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be one of the present established parties. A whole bunch of, of new parties are going are, are, are to pop up. Especially if they think that they can be the one party. In any event, no one thing. Nothing could be worse than it is today. You have nothing to lose. The present system is leading to a disaster of massive proportions. Nothing could be worse. We are headed towards a crumbling, a just terrible. Yes. Yeah. You say that the army can move, say, 100,000 settlers the Arabs can't remove Jews because it's not going to shoot them. They have no such compunction. And the Arabs know that. One of the great things about it is that it'll be a very, very, very swift move because they're going to run. Because they are convinced that we'll shoot. Yeah, certainly so. Sure, I don't want to shoot at anybody, but they are told to move, and they know that Khan is crazy. <laughs> and he'll tell the army if they don't move, shoot. They don't move them. That's guaranteed. I mean, this is guaranteed. I mean, I served in the army a number of times when, when I was sent to 
put down writing, they all it always stops immediately. <laughs> always I miss where I never had to shoot a single out. It stopped immediately. It was you could you could feel the fear in the air. You could taste it, you could touch it. And that stays on and blind. This is this this is the audience. It was only in in cities where they weren't afraid that Arabs were shot and killed. This is the incredible thing about it. it it's so clear to anybody. Yes. Is there any reason that Thompson could become a uh, one man party with just one speaker, one person expressing their opinions? And Look, had Thompson run in this election, you would have seen the number of really talented people that Thompson had. Tremendously talented people. Do you think that Cox could have gotten where it, it got because of one person? There's an organization there. Tremendous organization. We were, we were, we had a budget of $32,000 a month until, until being dead bought. We had big offices all over this country. We had trucks and, and, uh, you know, walking talkies and, and good ones with us. A base radio, a, a 36, a, a 12 meter power. And I said, it's tremendous. He was a real good, a pleasure to see. You know, an organization running. I was never used to that. It was running properly because it had money, it paid the people, and when you pay somebody a person, you can't depend upon volunteers. The volunteers can supplement a paid, a, a paid staff. But you can't expect the volunteers to come in at 8 o'clock and, and work in the midnight. You can expect it from a paid person who is not only paid but also believes in it. And you have talented people. But it was that they, that they didn't get an opportunity in this election to be seen. Yeah. Yes. What happened Nothing, nothing, nothing that I really think you can make down, except that, for example, Fitzy Woods would not be given the tax benefits it has, it has now. I have nothing against the Fitzy Woods per se. I don't have anything against the Fitzy but it will not get the preferential treatment it has gotten till now. For example, I'll give you an example. I went to ask a uh, you know, a question to the minister, and one of the one of the ministers, the minister of agriculture. How much water? What is the percentage of uh, of water given to Kibbutzim and Moshevim and and cities? The Kibbutzim make up three percent of the uh, country and get one third of, of the water. Then it's enough. They will get their fair share. I, I think they don't want to hurt them. If they have got to, they have got to, to be shrunk into their proper position. That's the fair play for them to be, to be seen, and so I'm certainly not going to take the to be seen and do to them what they would do to me if, if they could. The Kibbutz serve is a very, very vital thing in the economy of uh, Israel. But it, it should know what its purpose is and not the uh, and not the other. So, yes. Thank you very much. Why do you think it is impossible for the Arab population to accept a small piece of territory and to decide that and then to have that result in an overall climate of peace between the Jewish people of Israel and Israel and the Arab world? Why is that impossible? Because they believe that the rest of the country is also there. Well, just because they believe that, or some of them believe All of them. All of them. All of them believe it. All of them believe it. Every one of them believes it. And furthermore, when you give up land, you convince that you did it out of, out of weakness. Well, 
First of all, it's very vital for people to, to realize that there's no peace with Egypt. There's no war with Egypt. With Egypt. The Egyptian papers daily revile Egypt. They have broken the peace treaty in a thousand different, different ways. They don't allow tourists into Israel. They don't allow their culture to into Israel. They don't do anything. There's a book there now in Cairo. Israel, Israel is not allowed, allowed in. When they murdered, when the soldier murdered six, seven uh, Israelis, you still have not gotten a penny of, you know, compensation from them. Eleven years, 1966 to 1967, under Nasser, there was no war. You think that Nasser signed a peace treaty with Egypt? With, uh, with Israel? Of course not. As long as Egypt believes it will, it will lose a war, it has no reason to start a war. The moment it believes that it, that it can win a war in conjunction with other states, it will join the war. Period. Period. You don't give up land to a nation which started four wars with you. You do not give up land. Period. Otherwise, why should they not start again? Why should they fear to the start? They start a war, they lose, and you give up land. In any event, the Palestinians want all of Israel. They believe it is really there. They believe that time is on their side. They believe that Israel is weak. Every retreat that Israel makes convinces them that Israel is weak. And the next step will be the next step. And the next step. The moment that they get that they learn that they have, then they'll start talking about the boundaries of 1947. When Arafat said that he recognizes 242, what most yo yo's here did not realize, that he said within the context of all the UN resolutions, including 181 of 1947, which established a you would say, without Japan, without Romney, without Lido, without Berkeley, without, without Osho, without Atlanta, without Ashdod, without the Western Gallery, which is a pretty tiny state. And the resolution was called for allowing the Arab refugees to go back to their homes of 1948. What, crazy? Nothing. Not a thing, nothing, nothing, not a thing to do with nothing. They should be grateful that you don't take all the occupied land that they hold, like southern Lebanon and Jordan and all the rest. Yes? Uh, I have a yeah, people, I'm saying you're, you know, thank you for question first. People in Israel do not, uh, they have a tremendous tolerance. They take anything. They're not going to riot because of Kahani. They'll, they'll, They'll sit around in the in the uh, cafe saying, "Oh, why that's terrible! What's terrible, 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 terrible. For a week they'll say terrible, and that's and that's that. Not gonna do anything. It's not a supporter. The supporters, what can they do? Burn down the city? I don't want them to burn down it. And they're not going to burn down the city. No, Israel is not a place like over here where uh, riots and and demonstrations managed to get President President Johnson to uh, to to uh, to uh, say that he's not running. It's a different it's a different world, a different world over here. As to your first question about the uh, the visa and so on, in America there is a policy that if you're not a citizen and you have a a, a, a uh, criminal record, you do not have to be given a visa. This is the law. I have a criminal. I have a long criminal. Alone. So they don't have to give me a visa if I'm not a citizen. 
So my hope, the point is, that I claim that I that I am the truth. And that will be heard in the court. But if I should lose, they do not have to give me a, a visa. There is no obligation on any country to give any alien a visa. I'm, I'm bought from Canada. I'm bought from England. I'm bought from Belgium. They stop me at, at the uh, toll booth at, 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 at the <laughs> That's enough, Mark. Yes. Israel has stupidity allowed Papa to go to the international arbitration. Right. It was also done with a loop. Have they learned? Have they learned? They've learned. They've learned. Have they learned from it? No. Have they learned from it? No. 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 Obviously not. Obviously not. Obviously not. They won't stop the finish. Yes. It was to be the lecture. Um, will that mean that you all still stay here and, and, and the Secretary will not come into existence? Yes, yes, what? Yes, Secretary. Yes. You mean on the West Bank? Yes. Will that mean that the one will not still stay here? It would appear, yes. On the other hand, one of the things that people don't realize is what was written in uh, Cambodia. Most people have never seen the can't be, can't be Camp David Accord. Under the Camp David Accord, the Begin sign, when autonomy goes into effect, the Israel Army will leave all the cities and go into, into, into camps in the area. And the, uh, the police will be taken over by the Arabs. That's what Begin sign. Well, people don't realize that. The Arabic person has never seen the Camp, the Camp David Accord. But that is what Begin said. Now, no question that if autonomy comes into effect, and Shamir has been talking about autonomy, that the Arabs would not immediately come and say, all right, this is, this is what you signed. So where will the state come in to that? I have no problem with the Israeli army, Lee. I'm quite the opposite. I would love the army to leave and to leave us there alone. <laughs> we have no problem here with the house. We will... I'm lost to it. But, uh, The Army's purpose in the territories is not to protect Jews from Arabs, but to protect Arabs from, from, from settlers. Of course this is true. If you gave the settlers a free hand, uh-huh. it'll be like the old Wild West. I mean, the Indians would not be there. Certainly so. Yes. Absolutely. But not at once. First of all, we have a big debt which the Arabs owe to Sparta Jews. The Jews from Arab countries are owed at least four billion dollars. And uh, we expect we'll, 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 they will they will give us bills, them them bills. Well, on this, I'll go to arbitration. On that, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. Because they'll, they'll recognize these bills, and they, and they recognize those, those bills. And we'll probably come out having them owe, owe us money. I'm sure of that. I'm sure of that. <laughs> you don't know how much money you left behind yeah. in Baghdad and uh, in, 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 in Cairo. I don't know. Yes. Who really is the problem? The field law is not letting the Arab workers come into Israel. Right. What is that? Is that still going on? Is it either way? What is it? What is it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy thing. Three days they won't come. Two days, two days they, they uh, do come. Three days they work. Two days they go stone. If you would realize it, this is a golden opportunity for them to get rid of our workers and compel Jews to learn to work. If they would only realize there's time that if they bit the bullet now, they would save Israel in every way, in every way. But they don't realize they're too frightened to bite the bullet. And they're continually pu- pushing things aside, maybe putting it, you know, tomorrow or something. 
tomorrow, or maybe it'll be better tomorrow. It's a golden opportunity for them. Pity. Pity. Yeah. Um, how long is the receiver today? Uh, and our receiver? Yeah. Eleven students. Eleven students. First of all, we are picky about whom we choose. We are selective about whom we choose. You don't just choose any, anyone. This is not, there's definitely no need for one, for one more yeshiva in uh, Yushalayim. There's plenty of yeshivas. There's a need for eight different yeshivas. This, name, this is a different, very, very different. And so, uh, there are 11 students. And uh, our second reason is, of course, the uh, facilities. We are in a difficult position. Very, very small, cramped, and so on. We are in the process now of buying a building. In the process now of buying a building. So I'm running around trying to borrow money. If anybody wants to lend me money, I'll have them. Uh, I'll, I'll pay it back eventually. Uh, anyway, here we are, we, we, we are buying a building. We, we want to buy a building that is large enough for half it to be used by the yeshiva and the other half as an, as an identity center. There's seminars and leisure training and so on, including every summer bringing over a certain number of, of selected top people for an eight-week leisure training program. So we'll see, we'll see what we we'll, what we'll, 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 in, in the meantime, I don't, I don't, I don't know what will be tomorrow. And we'll see. We'll go from day to day. Yes, any other questions on this? Yes. How many members of Scott Plus are this point? Where? In Israel? About six to seven thousand members. In Israel people don't don't join parties easily. People vote. People vote 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 for parties. Unless it's a party that can that can give them work, jobs. Ah, then they then they join the party. We can't give them job jobs. So they don't they join. And, and we don't push for, uh, for uh, membership here. We don't push for membership. We push for votes. We push for votes. When you get the votes and you have power, then you have the members, then suddenly everybody's going to come running to you. All the, you know, uh, I was a supporter years and years. Ago. Just like I met in America, I met about close to 230,000 members of the JBL. <laughs> uh, so it's the it, same with your cop. Oh, cop number four. Every taxi driver is a cop. Look at it. It's like, you know, I have a million members of the uh, Irgun. It is. Everybody was in the Irgun. Well, anyway, yeah. Any other, any other questions? Okay, then I, I just want to finish up before the little, I think, before I turn this over. Um, and that is, again, the key project which Koch is going to be worth working on now is this national emergency government. And it's a very sensitive issue, and it's a delicate issue, and it's a kind of issue that we have to be careful with because this is the kind of issue that you can wind up in jail with like that. We are not calling for an overthrow of the government. We are calling for a referendum which the people demand the freezing of the market. Unless that happens, the country is going to go under. Uh, that, that, you can just see, you can see it, you can touch it. Country falling apart, crumbling apart in every way, socially and economically and politically and militarily. And above all, there is a feeling of despondency in the country, which we never saw before. A feeling of depression, a feeling of, of fear. And what, in my year, in my year, what is going to be? So, so there was a, a time when, you know, people asked, my ears, and not with, the, with despondency, but today there's a real fear. And people want, people are running away from this. We must put an end to it. We must change the system. A referendum in which the people demand the, the dispersal of the Knesset, an immediate election within a month, in which the only parties allowed to run are parties that accept that minimal program. And they are committed to implementing it. They have the election. One party wins. That's all. One party. And for four years, they have a free hand to implement this program. Put down the Intifada, 
connect the territory, to move the Arabs out, change the economic system to, to new capitalism, free enterprise, and change the educational system of Israel into one which gives pride and, and uh, Jewishness to, uh, to young people. That is what must be done. If England could do it in World War II for six years to freeze democracy, we can do it for four years. But our position is far, far more dangerous than that of, of England. England, at the very worst case, would have been cut. In our case, we'll be exterminated. Yes. Yeah. For some reason, uh, we don't know anything about yet. Uh, we, we don't and we will close to the election. There's no confidence of passing somehow. Uh, something happens within the Chicago, the army, whatever. If there were new elections, would we run again as a party? We will certainly run. We will certainly run again. However, we'll be running on a platform demanding this referendum. No, if you're calling for allowing the people to vote on this thing, you're not advocating anything. You're saying, let the people vote on it. Now, having said that, who knows? Anybody who predicts anything about Israel is either a prophet or he's crazy. There are no prophets today. And so, and, I mean, you can't predict anything. You can't predict anything with the with the uh, country. Nobody knows what will be tomorrow. Who believes that Shamir, after standing firm, 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 would invite in Shimon Peres for the, for the specific purpose of having elections in the uh, territories and an international peace conference and, and so on? Who would believe that? I mean, this is the final question that it was fourth of you. How is Bushemuni uh, responding to Shamir about that? They, they, there is. A, uh, they are on a hunger strike. There is they're on a on a hunger strike opposite his uh, his office. If I was Shamir, I would pay them to go on hunger strike. You want to go on hunger strike? I sent him a TV set. I said, what is? Let him on hunger strike. What do you, what do you want on a hunger strike? And instead of a hunger strike, you know, Shamir that has so, so much power in the territories called for five thousand Jews to to go out and smash the nearest Arab village, that would, that would have a more profound impact than anything else. But they won't do that. And that's the problem. Okay, let's... Uh, you want to take it now? Yeah, yeah, take, take it now. No, 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 take, take, take it now, take it now. Take it now. Either people are getting cold and putting on their jackets or they're getting ready to leave. <laughs> I think it's the latter. Uh, well, Shalom, I'm glad to see some familiar faces. And I'm even happier to see some new faces because uh, this shows me a reaffirmation towards a commitment towards an ideological movement 